as well. There you go. Good evening. Welcome to the May 29th, 2024 Glenn Board meeting. May 9th. You said the 29th. May 9th. Um, first, in the agenda, uh, our chairman is out tonight, so I'm the vice chair. I'll be assuming his duties. And we're missing him. I guess that's it. At all point, Jack Meany is a board member for tonight. First on the agenda is a conceptual meeting for Raymond Johnson for Whitetail Lane and the commercial zone. Right here. This is a you want to get up and state your name and my name is Raymond Johnson. Okay, these microphones are pretty pretty sensitive, you don't need to speak into it. Okay, like I'm Raymond Johnson. Okay. I own a piece of property at 32 Whitetail Lane, and uh, I'm in the process of uh, building a Morton building. It's already up and approved by the uh, Mr. Shepard, I believe. Uh, came down to 425.24, and uh, looked it over. I was very satisfied with it. Uh, the Morton guys were there. We passed this structural and uh, as far as the uh, framing and insulation and mentioned to me that I had to come up here and apply for a building permit for a petition. Now, I understand uh, th those condos are approved for five units. I really want to fit, you know, tone mine down to two. Uh, and uh, I was told I had to uh, come before the planning board in order to uh, get the planning board to approve whatever we need to get done here. Okay. <coughs> is the, the petition you want to build, is it going where one of the four petitions would have gone? Excuse me? Yeah, you got you got Sure. It's a, it was a five-unit building. Five-unit building. So approved. There were, there were four interior walls, interior petitions. I want to put one interior wall. Right. Is it, That's it, it. Is it in location of one of those? Four that we're going to be in there is, or you? It's going to be midway. I, I actually, uh, uh, Mr. Shepard, explained to me make a little draft, get right. some, get some numbers. So Chris, the builder from Morton, helped me out. Okay, and he suggested I come up here with a draft, and you have a copy of this. I left it with the planning board, girls. Yeah. This is the same copy right here. If you don't mind me stepping up? No, sure. Building is on the other side. Yeah. So you're putting that almost in the middle, 54 feet, 52 feet? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. We approved that as a 
what, five five buildings on there? Yes. Five five five, five units. units. Five units each. Yeah. Right. Right. And that's the fifth building. Excuse me. Is that the final building going up in there? As far as well, I own two or two of the lots. That's only one of them. This is one of them. So this is thirty-two. Right. Yeah. I don't think I'm. I want to build another one there. Okay. In all honesty, I mean, down the road, if something happens to me, my daughter gets it. Okay. She can do what she wants. But right, right. my suggestion and my will: do not build another building. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> it's range your pockets. <laughs> to say the least. I mean, whatever. I mean, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I mean, really the petition basically, I, you know, I was talking to my friend of mine who's going to help me. His name is Donnie Hope. Yep. He has built some stuff up here before. He knows what he's doing. He built his brother's uh, house on Riverdale Road. Uh, Billy, he's a good guy. He actually helped us do a lot of the work down there as far as uh, digging the... Uh, the holes for the uh, the footing, the foundation, that'll help this help me with the uh, contracting. Guy knows the stuff. Uh, he mentioned to me that we want to build a two by six insulated petition, and and I talked to him first. And uh, when I talked to Chris, I said, "Let's go midway," and he drafted this up for me, showing me where the you know the center stud is, yep. uh, and and that's just where I'm at. So right now it's at a standstill, <coughs> and yeah. I'd like to get it going. The plumbers that did his thing, he basically finished today. Uh, we're waiting for an inspection, which is like two weeks out. The other bad news I got from the girl in the in the in the, uh, in the, in the uh, uh, permit office here this afternoon was I need a state-approved septic design. No, well, don't. that's a turnkey operation, yeah, no. already state approved. You know, the system's already built. They built that before they built any buildings. You're right. already doing that. Exactly. That all part of the, site, the whole site plan? Uh, the plan is, the master plan signed by the state is somewhere in this town hall. Yeah, it is. And I, I don't, why, why am I getting some bad, some yeah, bad vibes? We know, we know you don't need that. We'll, 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 get our, we'll get her on the right path on that. Ex thank you. <laughs> the, um, the building's in the same plot it was supposed to be at on the site plan, right? Yes, sir. Okay. That's, that's the mean, only thing we care about is you put it in the right uh, place. All right. It's, it's in the exact perfect spot, okay? okay. Uh, uh, the surveyors came out, did, did their pinning, okay? I made sure everything was precise. They checked it once, twice, three times and said, you go. Uh, Brent, this from the cellar dweller, did his thing, said it's perfect. Uh, I mean, as far as uh, for, for, for digging, trenching, he said it's probably the best site he's ever been on. We had it all perfect for me. Didn't have to tweak anything. He came in, put his put his forms down. Bingo! The concrete showed up. Walls went up perfect. Everything lined up perfect for Morton. Uh, Morton said it's probably one of the best sites they were on too. Solid as a rock. No, nobody gets stuck. I helped them out. I mean, okay, sir, we just sir. want to move on here. We want to get a finished building. Sir, yeah, I think we're all set. Um, the, um, if the building's the right spot, that's what it's I'm perfect. For. I mean, they would go with that. He's not adding units. No. No. So, I mean, I don't I want to tone it down. Too much traffic in there already. Yeah. I, I don't think there's anything we need to do. I mean, we're not going to redo a site plan to. No, we don't. Because we don't fill the entire side of the building anyway. That's not part of the site plan. The only question is, is you all want to come down, I'll, I'll take you down there. That that is, I'm sure it's on the existing plan. If, the, if that's required, that's required. The only thing you might want to look at is look at that site plan that we did approve and see if those demising walls need to be fire rated. That separation wall between the two units. See, see if they see if it needs to be fire rated. If those, if those we're gonna, so, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna get whatever whatever the best stuff out of it there well, is. You're gonna look at that plan to see to see what that requires. See if, so, what you're saying is if we uh, get, get a fire retardant, that dividing wall may have to be fire. Okay. Yeah. And the, the building, okay, the I got you. Well, we're going to insulate it and sound insulate it, too. Yes, but that doesn't, but if that doesn't mean the fire, always meet the fire code, so just make sure whatever you do. Who would know that, Borden? 
No, you're going to want to talk to the building inspector when he yeah. comes in. Don't no, not. You mean Mr. Shepard down there in Golfstown? Don't talk on there though. That's not. He's got to talk to him while he's here. Oh. Is he here? No, he's not here right now. But you have to come in. You have to oh. find out when he's here. Make an appointment to see him here. Okay. You can't go see him in Golfstown. That's that. He's not. I, I know that. Work for us when he's in I, I know that. He's <laughs> two, what, two hours at four hours or something for the yeah. every, make it, every make Thursday. Make with the girls and, and meet him here. Okay, we'll do. And, um, and we'll tell you that you don't need any approval. You don't need to come back here. You don't need. There's no. There's nothing the planning board needs to do. As long as the building is in the right spot per the site it's plan, perfect. Then we're it's okay. precise. Yeah, that, that's I wouldn't have it any other way. That's all about us. We wouldn't want to pick it up and move it. Yeah, <laughs> that's all about us. I'm mean, so we're okay if we need the right alert for the building inspector or whatever. We'll we'll take care of it. How are you doing as far as a building inspector here permanent? Uh, have you found one yet? Not yet. It's a slow, it's a process. We're wow. not involved with it. We're just the planning board. Trust me, I understand. <laughs> I own trucks. I know what helps like yeah. how to get it. Are we, are we all set? Yeah. I guess to partially answer that question, uh, we have on our selectman's agenda Monday to review, uh, Naomi, how many? Eight. Eight uh, applications yeah. so far. So hopefully, mm -hmm. yeah, hopefully we'll narrow it down to, we're, we're talking maybe three candidates, then do some interviews in the next, uh, you know, next little bit after that. But we have some applicants, so. It's hopeful. That's, that's a positive thing. Yep. Yeah. We're all set. We're good. We're good. Uh, how long will it take to get an answer, just out of curiosity, or an approval? We, you don't need an approval from us. We, we, we'll just. You're all set. We'll, we'll talk. To, I'll talk to the girl in the office. Okay. Do I have to come up and, 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 and purchase a new permit for this? No. Well, I need to get a building permit for the wall. For the wall. Right. Okay. But that's that's. No, what's no, 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 I already. Let me good. ask you something. I just spent twenty two hundred dollars oh, for the building. Yeah, then you should be all set. No. You already got a building permit for the whole building, right? Right there. Yeah. yeah. Then it should be fine. You're going to have to have it inspected before you insulate and cover it. Okay. But you want to talk to the building inspector about the fire code requirements. I will. And when can I speak to him? Any idea? You have to make an appointment. Oh, I've got to call and make an appointment. Yep. yep. And meet him here. Yes. Right. Excellent. Thank you all. So, okay. He's coming for your plumbing inspection anyways, isn't he? Uh, Mike is all... Uh, yes. Uh, I called today and she said that I think it's the 27th that so we're on for that. look at it then. Have him look at it then. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. I've got bad hearing. Sorry. I apologize. No, 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 you can okay. speak as loud as you want. It's, it's, it's better. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? Yeah. That's it. Have a good day. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you for your time. Next on the agenda is a conceptual hearing for Thomas Birch for in the RA zone proposing a wildlife pond. I brought a stand to present those. Where would okay. you like me to put that there? Or? Uh, yeah, the camera. Wherever everybody can see it. Yeah, the, and it, it'd be on the camera that way too. Right in front of the podium. Yeah. All right. Your Jason Boulder from Meridian Land Services. Okay. Now, 
before you get started, um, this is a conceptual meeting. Correct. Nothing anybody says here is cast in stone by anybody. Um, I mean, it's just a general discussion about <coughs> what you're doing and your, your need to even come the here for what you're proposing. Yes, the main goal is to see what if what we would need, if anything, from the town to, okay. to do the construction of this. And I just want to make it clear, if I, I, I'm assuming that some of you folks are here for, because of this. Mm -hmm. um, because this is a conceptual, there were no butter notices sent out. So nobody was shortchanged by not getting a butter notice. We don't send out a butter notices for conceptual hearings. <clears throat> um, and I will give you all a chance to speak, but we're not going to engage in the conversation. If, if it moves forward, then we'll, there'll be time for that. Can we ask questions? We, we're not obligated to answer because this is only a conceptual. I mean, what we say today may not be what comes in tomorrow. Okay. There's, there's no, there's no. But if we have clarifying questions about this from this gentleman, can we ask him or no? I wish you would do that out in the hall. Okay. This really isn't the, isn't the forum to do that at this point yet. Okay. We'll, we'll get there, but we're, we're not there yet. That's why there were no butter notices sent out because it, it's only a discussion to find out what, what they're looking to do and you really have questions for us about generally what we're going to require. There's no specifics that anybody is, is, has to live by. Does the town, do you guys act in an advisory role or do you eventually have to permit this? Board? We don't even know that yet. Okay. We're, we're, we're going to get to that maybe tonight okay. to Thank figure you. that out. Do you mind if I add one, one thing, sure. just to, on top of what you've said? Um, I watched the the conservation meeting yesterday, and our <coughs> excuse me, our town administrator said something I thought was very helpful. Um, that because we don't have a building inspector right now, we don't have a code enforcement officer right now. It's sort of this is this is atypical, and that's why this is happening. Okay. Normally, that initial step would happen with one of them. Um, so I thought that was just worth repeating here. It like when we hire. For those roles, uh, this type of meeting would not be happening. <coughs> That's it. Okay. Thank you. So, all right. Uh, my name is Jason Bullock from Meridian Land Services, uh, representing Thomas Birch, uh, the owner of Map 411, Lot 338, off of Buxton School Road. Uh, he purchased the property about six months ago, and is essentially looking to construct a wildlife pond. Currently, uh, we sent an application into the state, and of which the brothers got, that's where they got the notifications, was on the state level. Um, so the property abuts Buxton School Road, and along two sections, along the southern and northern end, and there's Peacock Brook that runs through the center of it. And you can see that here in blue. And the wetland, Pulestrian wetland edge is up here. And so we are at least 100 feet off the road and therefore will be difficult to see from the road. And this is what we're looking to do, is essentially construct the wildlife pond down in the Palestrian wetland edge and maintain at least 80 feet to Peacock Brook. I have told Thomas that there's, we do not want to touch anything to do with the brook, uh, which is a higher value right. wetland. I don't think Peacock Brook is a um, shoreland protected it is not, or no. It's one class lower than used to be for that, right? Correct. So everything we're doing is away from the brook, and I even told him that anything that you have on the other side, you would need a permit to even get across it, and that would be basically an uphill battle. Mm -hmm. So he, and the reason we chose this spot is 
it's the flattest area that receives um, that would be suitable for a pond. If you go north on Buxton School Road, it's fairly steep coming right off the road down, and then it basically goes right to Peacock Brook, so we make a good spot for the brook. Okay, so let's hold it there for a minute. Yep. Some questions come to mind. I'm, I'm trying to, in my mind, I think the board needs to do, trying to figure out if the planning board needs to weigh in on this at all. So that's my question is, do I need any sort of local relief for? Well, so I'm going to ask you some questions to help try to determine that, I guess. Okay. Is this going to be open to the public? No. Okay. So we're going to have a parking lot down there. Uh, one or two cars. That's his intention. At this point, there's no structures going up as far as buildings that we're proposing. Um, essentially, he just wants to go trout fishing. And, and no power <coughs> down there, no electrical power, no utilities? Nope, not, not at this time. Um, he essentially just wants to build a pond to go with trout fishing in. No. Okay. Nope. Okay, Private property. I don't think. I'm not sure that we need. I it. think it's PDS. Yeah. Yep. It's PDS. So so just uh, clarifying. Oh, go ahead. Um, so just on the, the last page here, it says there's a there's a spot where it says there's a proposed pump location. So that's for construction. Okay. So when they excavate down, they need a dewatering system, which is essentially that this area up here. So these are the two low points. So while they're digging down, they're going to have to pump up to what's called a dirt bag, essentially. It just fills up and lets the water bleed out, but collects all the sediment so that that doesn't then run. It'll be like and a diesel power pump while we're building it. Essentially, yep. Yeah, and that's all to be surrounded by siltation control. The stop power to be surrounded by siltation control. And I was going to recommend to him having us lay that out <coughs> from a survey crew. So One thing I would recommend, you're going to be down there in a hole. Sound's going to travel. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we're going to have anything to say about this, but it would be help these folks out a lot. And if you could put on there that he's using a low decibel pump, I can recommend it. Um, you don't want some 1950 vintage pump down there with a Cummins on it that uh, will go on at six in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I would not want that either. <laughs> um, I can suggest it to him. The state's already um, it's already at the state, mm -hmm. so that ought to be requested by the town. Um, so, and I can certainly let him know when I talk to him tomorrow. Sounds like that's going to be probably his biggest thorn because he's going to be running that 200 hours a day to keep the water out. Uh, it would mostly just be down when they're excavating. I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. Big water though, and they got to excavate more. That's not going to be enough. He's going to keep it running. True. Yeah. yeah. And this time, right now in the ground, if he was doing that now, he'd be in the big water. And yeah. The high water, because the, high, the water level is high right now. Okay. So I have a note for work to be conducted during a dry time of year. So this is not the time of year to be building a pond. Yeah. It would have to be I, I always recommend that people do it in August with no rain in the immediate forecast that they can. But in regards to the need to come to the planning board, I don't believe I have questions, and you'll know the answer. Um, does the state look at uh, how does this affect connected wetlands? Oh yeah, they look at connected and wetlands. Of neighboring parcels and what's the impact on the aquifer on, potentially? On something like that, they certainly. That's all at the state. Yeah. So okay. I've already had an open discussion with the reviewer Jessica Schultz at the state um, regarding her, cons her a few of her uh, items. Um, this is essentially an enhancement project. So we're taking a forested wetland. And we're trying, we're creating a more of a lake habitat 
an emergent wetland habitat. So we're enhancing the wetland that's currently there, which is the intent of the project, um, to cr create biodiversity on the property as to what's currently there. Um, so, for, and then, so we have multiple plantings going in. And as far as flooding goes, it's gonna aid in that because now we're excavating down a huge flood uh, storage this area. This is at the state level and not here? That's at the state level, that was my question. I, okay. I, this is m my, now I understand, now I know, I have to answer that question. How many yards do you estimate are coming out of it? I have to do the math on that. I don't know off the top of my head. Is it staying on site? You're, or are you trucking off? Uh, he has not clarified whether it's going to stay on site. I would assume that some of it would stay on site, but most of it would be removed. So I can certainly, I'll let him know about that, if it's removed from the property. Yeah. Okay. Well, the selectman handled that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got my note. What do you think of Chuck? Fine with me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's anything for us to. No. to Nothing on the local. Our site plan. No, there's no reason. It's, it's, it's throwing you at it. So. Okay. So from the town's perspective, if the states <coughs> issues the, the permit. The, you, the conservation commission really ought to get in on it. Um, so I guess that's what I'm asking from here that's is. Not, that's not us. I mean, they're a totally separate entity than us. Well. Uh, the intent of the meeting today was to determine whether we would need a special exception, a variance, go to the yeah, conservation. Yeah, buffer for the, 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 the variance for the buffer, which is zoning. Okay. The, the plan board, we, we, we toyed with the idea of making it by um, conditional use, but we haven't got that far yet. So it's all, it's all zoning and conservation. So it would be a zoning board meeting right. and first cons con. Right. Okay. All right, that was the answer I was looking for. Yeah, good one of the is how much you going to... And then the selectman with the yeah, excavation permit. Yeah, how much you're going to excavate if you're going off-site with it. Then. Okay, but if it's yeah, being site. removed. Yeah, we've got a earth product ordinance, which essentially anything will 5,000 yards going off-site. falls in. Okay, yeah. and I'm sure that's going to be determined when they do the... when he meets with his contractor, whoever he decides right. to use. I mean, if, if they can... Who's on site building, building up areas or whatever, like, you know. They can do that. Right. Just stay out of the buffer. Right. All right. Well, I guess that's my answer for that one. Um, just that, uh, if you don't mind sticking around for a few minutes, I'm going to let these people speak. I mean, I think now we, we're going to give them an organized chance to speak. And they, 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 last night you weren't at that meeting, at the <coughs> Conservation Commission meeting, so they... And the Conservation Commission didn't know much about it. So, okay. So they weren't getting much, for, if any, for answers. Um, so I'll, what I want to do is I'll let them speak here, but I really don't want to get into a debate here because it's really not our purview. Yeah, because it's going to go in front of the CONSCOM and right. the zoning. But if you don't mind, it would be nice if you could maybe talk them out in the parking lot after they ask their questions here. Yeah. Is that fine with you guys? Stick around after for a little bit. Yeah. All right. Cool. That'd be great. I can't. Uh, I mean, I can't make you do it, obviously. But I can, <laughs> I'm just asking. <laughs> no, that's fine. I got the answers I was looking for. Okay, I'm gonna give the unnotified voters a chance to speak. Please state your name. And sure. I'm Brenda Lashway. I live at 107 Buxton School Road. So my property is right where there's a lot of um, Peacock Brook that goes through Mr. Birch's property, and then my property is where it feeds into, and it's just... So, so you're south of him. Yeah. Yep. yep, just south of him at the base of this, all the, this, all the steepness <laughs> mm -hmm. down to me. Um, so... I've just got a little tiny bit of the brook, but from me, 
everybody past me who weren't official butters um, would could potentially be affected is is my fear um, because it, like past me there's just so many people who have water wetlands little parts of the brook little mini ponds whatever on their property that if something happens to that little bit of my brook which is directly near that it would affect them and I'm, I am concerned about that um, it's Peacock Brook it's also part of the Piscataqua watershed I consider it very important uh, piece of, of land and um, one of the large things this area does is it supports a lot of um, beaver there's they're um, very prevalent in that area so it's a great uh, wetlands for beaver as well as just for water and brook and all um, um, so yeah I am kind of concerned about how if it's coming okay so I was told by somebody that if the water comes down the hill it's going to be fed by, by basically by gravity it'll be fed down into the pond and that's how it's going to continue that's how it will be filled and how it will continue to stay filled but what that brings to my question is well right now the water that comes down from that hill goes directly into the wetlands and into the brook and feeds them so now if it's being diverted into a pond area to make that a, the first priority I don't know if that how or if that would affect the, the, the lands either um, um, Mr. Birch has talked about wanting to diversify some of the plant life to attract more animals he particularly has stated and written a number of times that he's very interested in having turkeys and deer in that area I will contest there are a lot of turkeys and deer already in that area and if you just walk outside my house from my house to his land I can see footprints from deer right now um, so those are a couple of the animals he seemed to care about he wants the the trout in his pond and said something about um, hopefully attracting waterfall so waterfowl follow I've already seen a couple of waterfowl that already live in the area just today um, but what he hasn't said anything about is like how this might impact possibly the beaver population out there I don't know that that doesn't seem to be one of the ones that he's been looking towards um, so that's big concern number one is the pond itself I know that he um, Justin and Mr. Birch have both stated that it's not going to definitely affect the brook at all and I would hope that to be the case but it, it does seem like it's pretty close to me so it's kind of hard to know for sure but that's that it won't affect it and then the other part that's a concern to me as the person who lives over here is where they want to build the access road very close to my house in there's just it's pretty it th the tree lines only a little bit of it there and then most of the woods over there so if that comes that you come in with heavy machinery driving down that length of an area right at the base of a hill where it's already really oftentimes dangerous going down Buxton School Road at the base of that hill anyway um, you know as soon as there's bad weather right there in front of my house at the base of that hill is where the, the cars are all, all going off the road drainage has been a constant problem in that area the town's always trying to address it for us and um, keep that road passable um, I get some flooding in my basement pretty much yearly so without with those trees being removed with that fresh dirt which has got to be a sizable enough amount to allow big machinery to go back and forth um, I'm concerned about the impact that that's going to have on the land on drainage into my yard drainage down the road into the next neighbor's yards um, how it might affect the road itself and the integrity of the road itself right now if the bus is coming down they're taking up the whole road so then if you have them pulling in and out and parking right there um, 
that's my big main concern is just the two, the, the pond itself, how it might affect the brook, and um, the whole Piscataquag area, and the road, and how that and the placement of it at the base of the hill, hill would affect us. Thank you for your time. This is just for the wetland impacts. Yep. Okay. Next. Somebody else? Uh, so I do not own property anymore. My mother does. Is it okay for me to speak on her behalf? She's out of town. Yeah, keep it a public comment. Yeah, public comment. Okay. And just keep, kind of I just want to be transparent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I grew up in where I've walked this land for a long time. There's already a pond on this property. And the new proposed pond is not that far from it. It's not like the existing pond is on one end of the property, the other one's on the opposite end. So I'm very confused why he needs to add another pond and fill in wetland to do that. Um, the proposal, which was read last night, it has a lot of flowery, flowery language in it, and it makes it sound like it's a deserted piece of land that he's trying to build a pond on for altruistic reasons. It's the land, the, the whole area is a very highly functioning ecosystem. There's lots of diversity. We have black bear, we have uh, deer, we have the turkey coming through the yard. We, I see fox multiple times a year, bobcats. There's tons of diversity in this area. So I don't think it's necessary to amend it and add a pond. Um, I spoke to Tommy myself and he said he's trying to fulfill a boyhood dream of fishing on a trout pond that he owns. Um, so I don't really think that this project is intended to increase biodiversity in an area that's already pretty biodiverse. I think it's, I mean, I don't want to be judgmental, but kind of a selfish project that someone's trying to do to fulfill their own need. Um, and my mother has the same question. She said that since he bought the property, she's noticed fewer animals coming through her yard. Um, he's been doing work down there. We hear the chainsaw going all the time. Um, so I don't know what he's doing. I don't know if it's disrupting the beavers already or other wildlife, but she, she's saying she's already seeing less in the area. Um, she's also worried about the aquifer and the flow of water. Everything works harmoniously now. So how is that going to impact things in the long run? So that's all. I just, I'm, on, I'm here on her behalf, but also someone who uses the land a lot. So. Can you tell us who that is? Kareen Bishop. Yeah, I mean, there's other stuff, but since you guys aren't actually doing the permitting, I don't want to hold you up. So, thank, thank you. you. Sorry, I had a knee replacement. It's a little slow here. Lori Davis, 118 Buxton School Road. My husband and I own the property across from it. Our big concern is traffic. We're on a dirt road. And everybody knows this has been the most wonderful winter for creativity on the dirt roads this year. You put heavy equipment on this road. Who's going to be responsible for building it up, putting drainage in? Because both those houses are going to get flooded out with this kind of equipment in there. Our big problem this year, from my point of view, was we had, and Tommy and I have talked about it, so from my point, it's going to be fixed with him. But when you have a truck parked on my side of the driveway road, because I live right smack in the middle of that hill, and then you have it right where my mailbox is, I can't come down my driveway and turn into traffic because that's blocked. And if somebody has a vehicle right past it, 
we couldn't get propane deliveries this year because there were two vehicles here and my propane people couldn't get in. I couldn't get mail delivered because they want 10 feet into the mailbox and they want 10 feet to get through the mailbox and they didn't have that so we were running to the post office all the time. But the bigger concern is that hill it's not wide enough. You know, a lot of our dirt roads do have ditches to them, but that particular part of the hill is the narrowest part of that road. And when you come from the west down, they can't see, coming west, what's down at the bottom of that hill. So if there's any kind of traffic there, we're going to have a big problem, and we're going to have a big problem with drainage and keeping that smooth. And I'm real curious if that's the town's responsibility. Does Tommy have to pull? A permit or does he have to sign something where that he has to maintain and fix the road what do you do for the culverts for them because it's all going to flood into their land those are my concerns well, I, I can answer that briefly um, if, if he's moving material out of there mm -hmm. and he needs to abide by the earth ordinance removal permit okay the select will have a public hearing on that because that's part of the process <coughs> okay because th that would be really the only traffic, you know, moving the equipment in to work and then move it out, it's a one-time shot. The, the, really, the traffic would be if he's moving material out of there, the okay. truck traffic. And there'll be a public hearing and that with the selectmen if that's the route he decides to go, if he wants to haul the material out. Okay. Um, you bring up valid points, and that, I think that would be the time to address it because the selectmen will have, they'll have the, author the ability to address it with them. Okay. The, the road agent will turn around and tell them that, you know, you're going to come onto the town road. You're going to have to usually build up the apron, apron so it, it's Is not that taking. Jason from Highway? Be, he's the okay. road agent. He'd be the superintendent. He'd be one in charge of whether or not they need to put a culvert in there. He'll, he, they have to go through and how wide it's got to be okay. in the line of sight so, so they can pull out safely in and out. Okay. So Thank you. I appreciate that. Sounds like I'm going coming back for a cons call in. Zoning, so. Our next hearing is on. Um, it probably won't take too long. If you guys just want to wait outside, he'll be out. Um, Ronald C. and Jacqueline S. Perrin on Dudley Brook Road. Restoration plan for DES violation. Read the letter here to see if there's anything. Uh, okay. Uh, my name is. Jason Wolick again, representing Ronald and Jacqueline Perron. And again, we're looking to see what sort of permitting we would need through the state or, or through the town in relief. Um, it's essentially a three-prong project. Um, currently, there is an existing uh, unpermitted road that goes through this wetland area. So this is the wetland area here and they constructed the road down to there. Currently, they have a cease and desist order from the town 
and they also have an approved restoration plan from the state to remove all of this material and they have it it has to be done by a certain date um, so that is all being addressed through the state in order for them to start the restoration however they need the cease and desist to be lifted in order for them to start the restoration work okay. um, again I think they don't need to go to ZBA for a little buffer buffer and variance so looking through the ordinance it looks like uh, access ways would be done under a special exception it's still ZBA though it is still BZBA, but it was, it's special exception, not variance. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was essentially one, that was the first item, because what they like to do way around the well but within the buffer <coughs> so essentially and then what they like to do is construct a gazebo down in the buffer area outside the building uh, setback it's for residential purposes right uh, yes so it's a it would be the, a gazebo for it's a accessory accessory dwelling well it's or not dwelling, dwelling so uh, accessory structure their residential problem. Yes, so we're, and it's already been permitted through the state um, because we had to do a shoreline permit in order to get this um, approved through the state. So we said we might as well throw in the gazebo um, and see what it would need to be through the, through the uh, town. So the question today is would the gazebo also be fall under that special exception or variance. Well, is it, that lot hasn't changed, right? The lot configuration hasn't changed? No, it predates the, the ordinance. So, um, so, it, so the only thing to deal with, it, if it predates the ordinance, the only, thing, the only thing you're dealing with is the buffer. Is the buffer. There's no building setback from it because any lots that were created prior to that 50 foot building setback requirement from wetlands that didn't apply. Okay, so it would still fall on the- So it's, it, the only thing you're into is the buffer. So it'd still be all a special, those two items would be special exception. Uh, yeah, there's only one. It's a special exception for the buffer for the, actually the road and the gazebo. So all impacts within the buffer right. essentially. Right. And the third item would be a perched beach down by the Horace Lake. Mm -hmm. We have not um, sought a wetlands permit for that. Um, essentially, we're looking to see if the town would entertain having a perched beach down by the by the lake. I know a few of them have gone in down there. They haven't. They have. Okay, but so that. You know, the first one. <laughs> That's always a good thing. Um, okay, so it would be something that the town has permitted in the past. Yes. Okay. And, and, and that's strictly with the, with the wetland permitting. Um, and again, with the... Because that would also be a 25 foot. With the buffer, right. That would all, so all three of those items would fall underneath the uh, special exception. Right. Okay. That was all. Actually, the, um, the gazebo on the first beach one, that's a variance because that's not a, a roadway. Roadway is a special exception because it's a roadway. Okay, so the perch beach and the gazebo would be a a variance. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> All right. Those are the answers. Of I mean, how how close they want to get to the water line with the perch beach? Uh, we haven't really. I'm assuming within 25 feet. It's going to be within that. Um, and either in that. At the end of the day, you're still within 25 feet of these two wetland areas and this wetland area. Okay. So either way, so it would be within the buffer 
But that answer is those three items. That would be all. We'll give, uh, we'll give the cease and desist on the road that the employee can restore. You, have, you said you have that? Does it come from the state or the town? Town. Town. Uh, looks like Tony. Yeah, Sawyer. Yeah, so you'd have to go to the zoning anyway to get that looked at. Otherwise. Even if they wanted to start the restoration, let's just say tomorrow to remove all that, they still have to go to zoning? Yeah, so. yeah, the problem is if you got to do any more work on the buffer, you really need that. At least for the roadway, you need that, that special exception. Yeah. Okay. So you might want to do it too far. You might want to go. Obviously, you can apply for them all at once, but you're going to, and it's going to be two different applications because one's going to be a special exception, one's going to be a variance. Okay. So, in order for them to, because they do have a deadline from the state to have the restoration complete. When is the deadline? 28th uh, of the 28th of June. Well, so. You'll, have, you'll make the, I mean, it looks like you have all the paperwork you need, but you need to fill out the application. Yeah. And the meeting is the first Tuesday of the month? Yeah, but the application deadline is Monday. And that would be the completion of the restoration, though. Yeah. So. If, if you get into the, the office over here Monday and apply for everything and get on the but zoning the for the. meeting would be June 4th. June 4th. June 4th, and then I have. Yeah, with CBA, then you'll be. 14 days to completely redo the. Is there any way around lifting that, or do you have to go to ZBA to lift a cease and desist for? They're the ones that have to do it. They tend to do we it. We don't have a county anymore. We don't have a building inspector, so. Okay. We don't have a building inspector. I mean, yeah, uh, the other thing is to get a hold of DES, if they give you an extension. Because of the, 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 the town of the laws, it's so weird. Yeah. So they should, be, they should do that. They wouldn't be the first time. No, it wouldn't be the first time. No, I will, all right, I will report back for that. So the two zoning variances would be to remove already existing fill within a wetland, and then for the gazebo and the beach, and then special exceptions just for the road. And, and the only variance, actually, is for the buffer. You don't need a variance because of the wetland problem. Well, th that's, that's what they were restoring would be all the work that they did in the wetland. Right, but the, the buffer encroachment is, in the town's purview, what you need the, the, variant, the special exception or variance for. Okay. So we don't have anything about once you get through that buffer, which is in the wetlands. That's, mm -hmm. that's a state problem. Okay. So if they were to do the restoration... If, if they could... Because that... They could stop the restoration and leave the buffer alone or leave what, you know... The part of the buffer they've already impinged on, you know, make, keep the work within that area. Then you're not you're not hitting any more buffer in the process, if that's possible. Yeah, I'm just reading the. So I just want to make sure that what you're saying. Works with this. Works with that because what I seem to do is come down, back a truck down, and just start removing it and into the truck and out of out of there. Yeah, what he's saying here is, is be, he, because you were in the setback of the wetlands, he's got 50 feet, but it's 25 feet, and the vegetation on the immediate shoreline, which is in the bottom. So this is all about disturbing the buffer, not actually filling wetlands. So as long as they're within the wetlands, they're, they're fine to, to restore it. Because that's right. the purview of the state. They don't have a buffer. So right. everything's from the jurisdictional line in. The buffer the state okay. Yep. So Okay. So I can say that they're good to go with that. But as far as cleaning up the buffer. Yeah. And, and, and he's got on here the 50-foot setback, and it's, it's 25 because that's a grandfathered lot prior to that ordinance, ordinance. taking place that it's Okay. Already. Yeah. I think that's all. Okay. Oh, you just need our Monday very did you? <laughs> Yeah.
Thank you. Nobody here to speak on caught one of this thing. That's our conceptual meetings, hearings. Um, we've got something else here, the voluntary merger application. So in the way these voluntary mergers work, somebody brings us a voluntary merger. I mean, it, it comes to the plan board more as a courtesy than anything. I mean, if somebody wants to voluntarily merge two lots together and they fill out the paperwork, it's just, the only thing we really check is to make sure that the bank isn't opposed to it. Um, sometimes you do that and you have two different mortgages on two different lots in the banks, throw a hissy fits if you make it. Yeah, all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, makes it hard to foreclose on it. I thought I saw something in here about the. Is there anything about the bank on that, Naomi? On the back of the application, they signed this whole mortgage. Okay. Right. Now that makes it easy. So Move we accept the voluntary merger of tax map 40764 and 40765 oh. to merge to be 40764 in its entirety. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Attention? Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, question. Question. Sure. What is a perch beach? It's when they, the, the beach doesn't actually go to the water. They build a little retaining wall, like just before the open water, oh. and they fill behind it full of sand, so they put their beach chairs and stuff at it. But it's not, it's not, it doesn't just go into the water. Okay. I never heard the term. Yeah, there's a couple on the other side of the lake. Oh. It's a sandbox. Yeah, pretty much a sandbox. Yeah. 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 <laughs> close, close to the water, but not in it. I pray sandbox. <laughs> and DES likes those because they don't impact wetlands. But they're, Except for the retaining wall. Yeah, but the, the idea is that retaining wall is out of the wetland, the jurisdiction. Jurisdictional wetlands, but it's all because it's right there, it's all in the buffer. Um, next on the agenda is Master Plan. Anybody um, have a chance to go through everything and Well, my initial thoughts were before we go choosing, picking and choosing questions, we need to ask what we want to be part of it. So according to RSA 
674.2, at minimum, it has to have a vision section and a land use section. And then everything else is made. Master plan may include transportation, community facilities, economic development, natural resources, hazards, natural hazards, recreation, utility, and public service. Um, section identifies cultural, archaeological, historic, regional concern, which is the last one that was our concern about what was going on with the junction of. Wallace Road and Mass Road. Um, oh no, it was a potential rotary downtown. Um, neighborhood plan, community design, housing, implementation section, energy section, coastal management. We don't have coastal management unless we're managing Coast Lake. Not like that. Yeah. Not like that. So in our. And the transportation section is kind of. Right. Not so, much because of so when we looked at, at our previous master plan questionnaire, there's a respondent profile, transportation, general issues, community facilities and services, land use and growth management, natural resources, economic development, housing, zoning, vision goals and objectives are those major categories. I have so. a suggestion for this may go in an existing category, but I think it would be helpful um, to know, do you leave town to go to work? How many days a week? What's your one-way commute? 10 miles or less, 10 to 25? I've got an idea on that. What's your job description? The, um, you don't ask purpose this by saying you don't want to ask too many questions because you lose people's attention and their, their willingness to fill this thing out real fast. Um, so I'm thinking we may have to like split it in half and do one series of questions and six months later do another series of questions and kind of keep the, you know, keep them to whatever the subjects are of those questions, keep them totally separate. You know, we could put a link or something in the, when the tax bills go, all right? Is there anything we could do at all with, with utilizing that mailing that goes out yeah. already with the tax bills? Yeah, well, the week. Yeah, you, we're you, not going to make it, obviously, to, okay. for that. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, that gives us six months to, for the next tax bill to go. Um, but, and, and I really like to keep it under 20 questions for each question, questionnaire. Well, the last one, we had 28 questions. The, the Plan, uh, the questionnaire that I like is the Strafford one. It just gives you a good visual response, um, but it helps us to answer some of those questions that Dan Gene just asked. Mm -hmm. um, but then the other, the other part of the puzzle is that we also have demographic information that the state puts out from our town that will tell us it, right now, it's eighty percent of the people work out of town. So, let's definitely get that so way. We're ask questions about. Correct. So, I mean, not. I mean, yes, some specific as to time travel and all that type of thing would be. I helpful. think it would be helpful also in a planning perspective to know wh what they're going to do. Right. Is any of that? Can any of that be here in town to provide work for people and also some tax base? for the town that's not residential or necessarily retail commercial. Well, maybe we could tailor a couple of questions to be commercially generated to see what kind of commercial uses would you like to see in town? And maybe list off a half dozen options and leave them blank to fill in one. If we don't know where they're going to work, how do we know which options to give them? We don't. That's why we're going to leave a blank so that they can fill in one. Other. Right. <laughs> you know, I think you're going to find a lot of home-based businessmen in town. No, I know you are. Yeah, but 80% yeah, of the folks go to work elsewhere, according to the demographic information yeah. the state has for where. Right. 
But that, that pre-COVID too, I'm sure. Any demographics um, the state has is going to be pre-COVID. 2023. Is it 2023? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Bruce, your, your, your idea about including anything in the tax bill, there's a little negative time. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. Seriously. I mean, I think we're not gonna. I don't think we need to put the questionnaire in the tax bill. I think we need to put some kind of a notice in there, saying, "Look out, we're gonna do a QR code like at the bulletin board in front of the town hall, in, in the town hall here, in the in the town office, and we'll get it out on the town website so that they can activate the, the survey monkey to, to do the questionnaire." But I think in the tax, we're not gonna send the questionnaire in the tax bill oh, itself. Okay. I think we're just going to put a notice in there saying we're in the process of doing this. You have to look out for and describe what. Just to put people on notice to be, it's you know, and it's a free way to get it out to everybody. You know, essentially. Yeah, I think, I think Chuck's right on that one. You put that in there. People want to take the tax bill, yeah. throw it away. They'll see that. They'll definitely throw yeah. that one away. <laughs> this is going to cost me more money. Yeah, that's, you know, that's I, mean, I don't know if it's something you could maybe. DRA probably won't let you print anything on the tax bill itself, right? No, I didn't think so. <laughs> and I think if there's anything you wanted, we'd have to decide that right now so that the selectmen, we could decide next Monday because you said to go out what day next week? Yeah, it's, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen Monday. Yeah. Well, but so if you're saying... Put the Sunday. Yeah, but okay. I thought you were saying, hey, keep an eye out you yeah, know, I don't think next we'll week. Have, I, I think we're, because we're getting more next week. We're not no, we're going to sign the warrant, then we have to get the DRA, then we can print any of the polls, any of the stuff, any of the maps. Yeah. Yeah, we're nowhere near no. going here. Right. Stand this, go no, down. I don't want to put something in there, and, and they're going to keep looking and looking and looking, and in four months they don't yeah. see anything, they're going to get discouraged. Exactly. Okay. So, remind me where Stratford is. Over there. Over, no, it's over there, Rochester. Stratford, not Stratford. Right. Stratford's up north. So what's Stratford the total population of Stratford? Stratford's not very big. It's uh, over. It says on their thing, I thought. They're over, they're over between uh, Barnstead. Yeah. It's along Route 4. They're over Barnstead, a little off Route 4. Barnstead, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, backside of Northwood, it's Rochester. Right. Not a lot over there, Stratford. The military took over that school over there, the National Guard of the training facility, and other than that, there's not a it's whole a, lot. It's a bedroom community for you and each. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. <clears throat> no, the observation I made about, I like the way this is laid out. Um, I don't know how they generated it, but the concern I had about ours is similar concern about theirs. You know, 371 people participated. The same, we okay. had just over 300 participate. 8,000. Yeah. No. So it's not even 10%. So how can you, yeah, but it's, it's typical, but then you make decisions on the people who share, make a, you know, input, and then the other people who didn't put the input sit around and complain. Well, you know, right. and so. But I think a lot of it is going to give the ability to do it right here like this. They correct, can do it right. while they're eating lunch, they can do it while they're on the bus. Well, they can do it the other thing that we want to be careful of is if that's the, the case, it's only one and done. It's not like, you know, you're going to go and try to win raffle tickets, so you're going to have 50 million <laughs> applications to win a raffle ticket. Um, you want to have it. Once they submit it. Well, you do the survey monkey thing. They, they only allow one response per email address. Okay. But what if you're going to like me? If it's tied to email, email right? Yeah. yeah. Or a phone number. You'll make up for the people who don't. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe we do it by phone okay, with those extra. There must be a way to do it by phone number. They're going to do it with a cell phone. Yeah. So Stratford's over in the Dover Durham area? Yeah. Rochester, yeah. Borders of Rochester. They got 4,200 people. Yeah. people. So half the people we do. Yeah. yeah. A it's a, it's less a less real half rural half community, I can tell you that. I've been, I was stationed over there for a while. So, <coughs> um, so it's not like you're five times. more females than males, just to let you know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the other piece of the puzzle that we, we probably need to do, yeah. this is important, that we need to put these questions together, et cetera. But the other piece of the puzzle is the 
the educational piece that has nothing to do with the survey mm -hmm. is that we need to have a public hearing that explains why we're doing this and that the state's expecting this. This isn't something that we're dreaming up. But we need your participation. Um, I don't think we can do it. We get the question, if we get the questions together for us, get the survey put together, and then we can do that for the county. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, we yeah. just want to have that part of the puzzle, yeah. not to leave that out to say that, well, oops, no, let's have it thought of at the beginning rather than doing the oops. And we also, at that point, perhaps, have people give us some ideas of what they think. For example, I keep seeing thriving downtown area being referred to in different places, I think including in our master plan. What do you, we what does that mean? A sidewalk going in front of the school. I mean, if, <laughs> yeah. if you're looking at Golf Town Village, or you're looking at Franklin, Tilton, uh, the, the those were mill towns that Correct. had a reason to that, have a downtown, right, and right. we don't have we that. We don't have that reason. What do you expect, to, what do you think a thriving downtown is, I think is important to get feedback on as well, and perhaps that comes at the public hearing or not. But a thriving downtown, that to me, um, I need specifics. What, what does that mean, people? Here, yeah. it's specifically in the context of here, right? Right here, where is it gonna be? Yeah. What do you see there, you know? Thriving, you know, thriving downtown is mostly a drive-through between here and Hanneke right here and along 114 Goffstown. Yeah, I mean, those were all small, yeah. I don't know about Hanneke, but Hanneke's got more small of a Main Street communities. more of a thriving community, I guess you would say, for downtown. I mean, they got more, more of the Main Street here. Yeah. I mean, it's more spread out. But see, then, so but, then. But everybody says, we want a thriving downtown, right? I think it's even right. in our existing master plan. What right. does that mean? Tell me what it that means. Doesn't as a mean planner. because historically we've never had one. Right because our identity is in smaller villages amongst, you got Riverdale, you got Ware Center, you've got Northware, which you, you can spit to. Um, then you've got Clinton Grove, and then you got Eastware that's underwater, and you've got all these places that are, you know, Slab City, which is not even a mile and a half from my house. It's a whole different understanding of culture and, and, and understanding of what why it's called that, and then you have the river, and, and, the, and the river historically was the industry of the town, you know, when it was noted as the toy factory place to, and then you've got your chickens, and we've never really been a dairy community, it's been chickens, you know, you can, I can have Steve Flanders sit here and talk for hours on the chickens, um, and that's what you did, um, but we're not that now anymore. And to expect we don't have the infrastructure to build a downtown. You know, we're not like when I was in Nigeria, they relocated this capital from Lagos, the smack dab in the middle of the country in wasteland. There was nothing there. And they just built this new capital. I've been there. The Abuja? Yeah. yeah, it's 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 unbelievable. They're driving up nothing, nothing in it. I agree. There's. Yeah, I'm just looking for more specifics because we. Right. Okay. So that means yeah. we're going to ask those specific yeah, questions, yeah, exactly. but we but we want that, to. But can come at public hearing for and have a big meeting and use the middle school if that's what the thought <coughs> is. If we're going to have that time and take that time, right. we should ask. I I think. Well, time timing is important. I, we're leaning towards making this somewhat happen without funding. Oh yeah. So if there's I an know. opportunity for us to do funding, I know. then we need to look at timing of when we present such so that the community understands why it's necessary to fund. Um, and that won't happen until next March. Mm -hmm. right? Um, but that would have to be concluded by the middle of January. In order to get on warrant. December is better. December is better. Yeah. How about November? <laughs> Even better. <laughs> Even better. Sooner than later. Right. But, that's but if that's the way we're going, but if we can generate this whole process electronically, it's going to only cost Naomi monkey time. <laughs> so, 
survey monkey time. Uh, no, she, she'll give that to somebody else. But so I'm going to ask you a question. All right. Out of those sections that you had. Yep. On, the, on our current one? Right. Right. I don't think transportation is. Well, we've got kind of a transportation thing going on already. Right. right. They, they started a little. But even then, survey. it's it so, means. So I don't think we need to address that. No. Um, it's more mainly. So we need a profile. That, that was at least targeted towards like elderly transportation. Right. Now. Recreation and elderly. Right. So I, I don't know that it would preclude the entire category, but it, it definitely covers a pretty good chunk of it. Yeah. Right. But the what kind of a return did you get on that question? 348. 348. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not too powerful. That's better than what I was, I mean, we would hope for five, but maybe yeah. 349. But if we can do this electronically and make it really easy, we may get more. Oh, I think we should. Well, I mean, yeah. they pulled out all the stops for that one, and it was electronic and also paper and mm -hmm. came, to, came to, you know, the voting booths and... Yeah, I know. Do you QR code with? Yeah. You no. can lead a horse to water. Yeah. So I, yeah, I don't know that making it easy is going to. Help. True. Yeah. All right. So, so if we go back to look at our master plan, which I imagine you've looked at, you, our questions. Some of you guys don't have this, right? Chuck, do you have that? What is that? This was the original one that went. Survey. Survey. Yeah, I have it. You don't. Jack, do you have it? No, I don't. I think I have two copies of it, so I'll work. So I and when you're talking about timing, um, it's also worth thinking about if it has to go through CIP, you know, the amount of money. So that would be, and then you're talking. I know. Well, I, don't, I don't think we'll, we'll, we'll be ready for that this year. I mean, I think it's going to take us a while to get to that point. Mm -hmm. CFP starts in like September, August. Right. Yeah. Something like that. September, October. So, out of. So. So the first official category is transportation in the questionnaire from last time. Is that maybe not as extensive or? Oh, thank you. No, we're based upon the report, which I don't believe it's a plan, it's a report. Mm -hmm. The last section is a plan as to who's responsible to do what. But we're like 12,000, not 12,000, 12, 2,500 people short of what they projected. What they projected. They projected, I think, 12. But 9,092, is that what we're at? I, I don't think somewhere. I don't think we need to worry about that too much at this point in time. We're obviously not going to go build a bunch of sidewalks or get a bus service in town. <laughs> well, we get a bus service. No, but some of those resources are already being provided that people aren't aware of. And that's the issue that you need to contact, you know, any CARES ministry from the church, any CARES ministry from local transportation groups. All those things are resources available. Um, I'm not sure if people like Uber and provide that type of discounted 
transportation for seniors, I imagine, but I don't know that. But that's all I've been doing for the last month, driving people to doctor's yeah. appointments. I thought you meant riding Uber. Yeah. I mean, what are you it's doing? Free. It's free. <laughs> but, you know, but it, that's what happens as a pastor. You just fill in the blanks. Or the congregation stepping up, and there's multiple people doing that. So anybody, there's not anybody in our congregation or even our spheres of influence who don't, shouldn't have transportation. Someone will give you a ride. Just look, speak up, ask. Maybe that's entirely wrong. Yeah. Well, I'll make an anecdotal observation. I have some people who go to the hospital and be there for two weeks and then come home and a week later tell me they've been in the hospital three weeks earlier because they're too private and don't want to. But then again, sometimes that's the person who complains the most that nobody cared. Well, how can, you know, it's not my habit to call the hospital, so do I get any congregants? Well, if they're not... The, Telling me they're there, they're not going to tell them who they're connected with. And then, even then, that whole parish philosophy has changed drastically, too. So that you don't really want pastors showing up anymore because it's none of your business, type of thing. But so I guess it's homework. We really just, everybody can work on what, what questions they think need to go in the questionnaire. Well, that's what I challenged us to do last time. I so. Know. And <laughs> sorry, I, I don't have time to answer so. the phone sometimes. <laughs> the other part of transportation too is we don't really, you know, we're, we're disconnected in such ways. No meaning, people. Well, here, mean, here's we're the, fragmented. I right. should say the better yeah. we get. Some here's the, here's thing, the answer to that. We have a real community center, so to speak, like some towns do. That can we request a report to be given to us from that? Well, so what they asked yesterday, I went over and met hand in hand and they've asked to come to select a little report because they're compiling all the So that came from hand in hand? Uh, it's, no, no, hand in, I worked with Helena hand in hand and that was with Southern Hills Planning. They're the ones who's crunched all the um, surveys. But, I mean, it's, it was interesting. It was telling. Population, the ages of those that need help and those that don't want anybody to help them. Do you think you'll need a ride? Do you know someone that needs a ride? They don't know somebody, but you know, it's it's a very different yeah. world. Well, it, it's typical of a rural community where you've got a fortress mentality regardless of how big your lot is. Mm -hmm. This is my castle. Yeah, I mean, we plan, we plan on sharing it anyway. It's just you okay. Know, like it would be helpful for us to. Yeah, the selectmen should know they were supportive to let us do it, and let's see where it is. And I think it's worthwhile as to what it came out. Um, and I think it would be very helpful for you guys to see what what came out. Yeah. You know, and where the age group, where those that did the survey. We broke down to areas of town, you know, where the most of the area needed rides, and where you know it was it was interesting how you could really play with and almost narrow things down. Right. Were you looking for twenty general questions, or I, I, I'm thinking we want to? We, well, I'm thinking we do. If if everybody could put together like thirty questions, and then we'll narrow it down. From. From, from, from everything we've got here, from Stratford, from where, from the stuff that we put together. We got a couple, um, a couple from Amherst, one commercial, one residential. You got one from Stratford, you got one from Hampstead, you got two from Amherst, but you got a business one and a residential one. Right, correct. Right. That's all of it. Which yeah. may be part of the plan to do two different ones, because the, the original one does have a business aspect, but. Right. If we get 30 questions, then maybe we can pull them out to separate them from commercial to residential. When's the deadline? For the 30 questions? Correct. Next meeting? Meeting after? Next meeting. Oh.
Well, we're going to start with this one. All right. When you are right. here. So we have a work session the first June. June. June, June 13th. So June 13th. So 30 questions, June 13th. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then if you can email them beforehand, that'd be awesome. So, yeah, that you can email them to me. I don't know why. Why can't you? Because we don't want to. We, we can't wanna, be a meeting. We can't right? have a discussion. Uh, that's right. Yeah. It's a non-public discussion. We don't want to do that. Is that yeah, is that don't, email? don't send in the morning of June 13th. Oh come oh, on. Come on. <laughs> So that's uh, that's so Thursday, Thursday, 11 30 so on the 12th. So that 11 at night, night. Yeah. If you guys could get them by that weekend or Monday, um, we could at least try to put something together. What's the, so, what's the date now again? June 13th. That's when you want to see these? No, I'd like to see them June 1st. June. Oh, <laughs> there we go. That'll be good. Okay. June 12th at 11.30 at night. Chuck, by June 10th, <laughs> like add that. a zero to the one. No, June, June 1st. <laughs> then you can have a little give towards the 10th. Sound like a plan for everybody? Yep. Yes. But we have to make sure that if we do get four conceptuals or merger, that we're going to stay until those questions are hammer yeah. hammered out. <laughs> I don't like the Does that mean we No, because it seems like we say we're going to do something and then we go and talk about what we were supposed to do and didn't do it. Saying, so at least maybe hammer through half of them. Get ready to burn the midnight oil. You wouldn't have seen the three if we had somebody to make that determination. Oh, okay, I understand. So yep. um, with that would be yeah, so we're still going to have to see the merger and the merger... Yeah, yeah. Go to the next time, but the conceptual is what I got from you guys was to put them on, don't hold them up, and that's why we did it. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'm not I complaining, mean, and you. Sometimes we have no control over those things, so. No. But. In other words, be prepared to burn the midnight oil. Yeah, if we have to. <laughs> so take a nap. And no. <laughs> don't, put the, don't put the whammy on us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next. Minutes. Uh, you guys got it for April 11th. April 11th. that draft RFP for engineering putting stuff together tonight. Okay. Uh, we yeah, we weren't planning on talking about it quite yet anyway. Okay. But that'd be good to get on the agenda next week or next next meeting. brief back and forth was we'll try and get it on the planning the next planning agenda to discuss it and then we'd be able to do it at the board agenda selectment agenda with the planning input after the next planning meeting 13th that's uh you know okay with everybody if you do the 13th you can get on our 17th the 17th the 17th the um Public hearing day. Okay, we get a couple. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if 
see that legal has gone through it, and we, were, and we go through it, then it should be easy. Too bad. I yeah. Yeah. I don't think so. Do have any issues with the minutes? Correction? Motion? Move to approve the minutes of April 11th, 2024. Frank second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'm going to abstain. Thank you. Abstain. Two abstentions. So it's three. Four. Two. Sorry. Three to two. Here we go. Three to two. Complicated down there. Not close. <laughs> Just a very quick uh, thank you to Selectman Matthews, who stood as my alternate for the first two of these meetings. This is the first one I've been to. Um, it was pretty interesting. So I look forward to many more. <laughs> okay. Want to make the final motion? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Who's our meeting for tonight?